Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, coming to the uh, to the talk. And uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about the my share my thought about the development and the trend of the renewable energy sources. And uh, once we have many many more renewable energy sources integrating with the power grid, that what the problem will be and what are the solutions. And we know that uh, the, the, the energy topic has been a very important topic that ha have been uh, ha uh, concerns for, the, for many years, for many uh, years. We, if you notice that uh, in the three of the uh, presidential debates, there are two of them that talk about the two uh, presidential candidates talk about the energy issues. And uh, so you can see that uh, uh, we, we want to know that the future of the energy and uh, uh, also it's, it's very highly uh, relevant to the future of the country. Okay, and uh, uh, this today uh, my talk will have the uh, following five uh, topics uh, from the following five topics from the introduction. Then is to discuss the different types of the renewable energy sources. And then is that once we have the renewable energy sources integrating with the power grid, what are the challenges and what are the solutions? And the solutions, especially in the context of the smart grid, then I will talk about what is smart grid. And finally, we will conclude the speak. Okay. Um, in 2003, that uh, the Academy of Engineering of the U.S. that uh, uh, selected 20 of the uh, top uh, greatest engineering achievement in the 20th century. Okay, including the automobile, the electrification, the uh, airplane, the microwave. You think which one is the top one? Okay, it is electrification. Okay. Electrification, that like, all electricity is so important, that, uh, uh, but uh, sometimes maybe you, you didn't notice it, right? Because it comes so naturally, like the blood flowing in your body. Okay, only you notice the importance of the electricity when you, uh, oh, sorry, for when you forgot to pay your uh, electricity bill, especially uh, in a Halloween night, right? <laughs> okay, and. Uh, uh, the power system, that, uh, uh, this is a, a brief introduction of the structure of the power system. The power system usually have the following structure. First, it is uh, uh, generated the uh, electricity from the generation side, from the power plant. Uh, multiple uh, types of the power plant, such as the hydro power plant, the coal power plant, and the wind power plant. And uh, once the power is generated, then uh, the, uh, the output voltage is around a couple of the kilowatt. The voltage, the power of the void, the voltage of the power will be stepped up through the trans uh, transformers to hundred or thousand kilowatt, and then uh, transmitted to different areas, and the, uh, through the transmission network. The transmission network also pr um, con constitute like a very large network, can uh, include uh, many many of the transmission lines, the transmission of uh, the generators uh, for a large, very, very, uh, large area. In the U.S., that except, the, uh, uh, except the Hawaii and uh, Alaska, that is U U.S., Canada, and uh, the, uh, Mexico is a big power system, a big transmission network. Okay, once the uh, transmission network, once the, transmi uh, the power is, deleted, is delivered through the transmission network to the uh, customer side, the URL uh, substation, the voltage will be stepped down and uh, uh, s uh, delivered to the distribution network. Distribution network, their function is to deliver the power to the customer. Usually it's uh, closely connected with the customer. And uh, the customer, we have many types of the customer. Usually it's the uh, residential customer, the uh, commercial customer, and the industry customer. Okay, uh, this is the introduction of the power system. Uh, this hierarchical structure has been uh, uh, has been uh, developed uh, over 100 years, and it's close to be uh, mature. But nowadays, the system, the power system, is experiencing is facing huge challenges. Okay, uh, the first. Okay, the first challenge is from the ever increasing electricity demand. According to the U.S. EIA, uh, in Energy Information Administration predicted that in the future we will have a uh, annually increase of the electricity demand of two percent. 
Okay, that means that we needed to build a more uh, power generation plant. Um, the, uh, in addition, that uh, we we all have new types of the load, the uh, electric vehicles penetrated into the power grid, and uh, it is predicted that in 2040 that there will be 35 percent of the vehicles, the sales of the vehicles are the electric vehicles. Okay. We know that due to the uh, depletion of the fuel cell, uh, the, the uh, fossil fuels, and the, the uh, concerns on the environmental protection, and we want to have the transfer the uh, electric vehicle to the uh, electric vehicles. The electric vehicle, like uh, if all of all the U.S. cars are electric vehicle, it will take 29 percent of the electricity consumption all over the uh, U.S. And uh, so it means that it transfer the pressure on the oil industry or gasoline, uh, gasoline industry, petroleum industry into the electricity industry. Okay, and uh, so it will accelerate the increase of the new gen uh, the new generation. Okay, and the pressure will on the uh, in, uh, electricity uh, industry will be more huge. Okay, then uh, another concern is from the energy security. The energy security has been existing right, ever since the first uh, oil, oil crisis in 1973. And uh, uh, because that we, from, the, from the left pie chart, we can see that the US, uh, US energy uh, has a large part, is for large part depend on the fossil fuels, including the petroleum, the coal, the natural gas. And the electricity generation also have a lot of from the uh, from the fossil fuels, such as the, uh, this one shows the electricity generation for by the sources. We have the lot of from the coal, lot of uh, from the ga uh, natural gas and uh, the uh, nuclear. Okay, because of the uh, 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 dependence on the dependent on the uh, fossil fuels, it will cause a lot of the uh, emissions in the. It caused a lot of emissions in electricity generation, electricity industry, and uh, the air pollution emissions from the electricity generation tops the sources of the air uh, the emissions, and uh, it contributes uh, uh, one third of the uh, air emission, and it contributes more than the industry and the transportation. Okay, so you can see. Uh, okay, to reduce the electricity, uh, electric the air pollution emission from the uh, electricity industry that uh, in 2015 that the US uh, uh, EPA uh, energy uh, I'm sorry environment protection agency announces the uh, clean energy plan clean plan uh, clean energy clean plan clean energy plan that uh, to reduce the emission from the electricity generation by 32% in 2030 so it will be like huge. That like it will change uh, the structure of the uh, electricity generation. Okay, so you can see that we have a paradox. On one hand, that we have an ever increasing demand, uh, electricity demand. On the other hand, because of the because of the environmental protection and because of the energy security, we need to diversify our generation. Okay, uh, this. This will be a headache for the Uncle Sam, and uh, uh, this uh, this uh, the the energy crisis that uh, this uh, topic this idea is also like uh, being uh, proposed by the professor uh, Stephen Hack from the Stanford University in 2014. His his book. Uh, resource revolution that uh, uh, talk about the energy crisis or resource crisis from the global perspective. Uh, in his data, that uh, the the energy crisis all over the world all over the world will be more and more serious. Okay, in his data, that uh, on one hand, that uh, the to maintain a good uh, life quality, the Western developed countries, that uh, the people, the middle class people, that uh, the Will they want to maintain their uh, high quality life? They will consume 200,000 kilo uh, calories per day for each of them, and uh, this is m more than 200 times of the energy consumption for 100 years ago. Okay. On the other hand, that the middle class team is 
continuously expanding with the new members from the developing countries, such as in China, in nuclear, I'm sorry, in India. And uh, in, uh, it is like predicted that in China and in India, there will be 2.5 cities like Chicago emerge every year in the future. And there will, in the next 15 years, there will be 2.6 billion people step their foot into the uh, middle class team. Okay, so the more and more people, more and more uh, population will uh, put a huge pressure on the energy and uh, on the energy supply. And uh, uh, the, the, the professor Hack called it is the uh, resource crisis. But the professor Hack is not a, a pacific. Pessimistic. He think it's not uh, just uh, the pressure on the energy supply, but it is uh, it provides huge opportunities, and uh, it called that it will drive the society move toward the uh, resource revolution. And uh, he also, uh, fortunately, he also proposed uh, the solution to solve the problem, solve the energy crisis from two aspects. One aspect is from the demand side that uh, we. Re, uh, improve the efficiency of the energy use and uh, uh, recycle the the the, uh, the material that are used for the that uh, that has already been used. On the other side, on the second solution is from the uh, generation side. Okay, he wants to say that uh, the next way to okay to solve the energy crisis is to uh, increase the diversity of the energy sources. That is to developing the renewable energy sources. Okay, and uh, 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 Professor Hack's uh, Hack's propositions also been has also been proved by the prediction of the EIA in 2012. Here we can see this is the curve that uh, sh this is the prediction curve of the EIA, the Info uh, Energy Information Administration of US in 2012 about the uh, growth in the world electricity generation, and uh, you have you you see two curves, two curves. One is the uh, growth in uh, domestic production, that the GDP. Another is for the electricity generation. Prior to 2012, you can see that the increase of the, uh, the, the curve of the GDP and the, the electricity generation well match with each other. They have the same rate of increase. But after 2012, it's, cre it's predicted that the cr the there will be difference of their increase rate. Okay, you can see that the GDP is increasing with the rate of 3.3% per year, but the, the electricity generation has the rate of 2% per year. Okay, the EIA explains the reason for, like, uh, for this difference. The first reason is like, the improvement on the uh, energy efficiency. Like, the more and more the, elect uh, uh, the appliances are being uh, improved the efficiency of using electricity. The second reason is that like, it's from the uh, utilization of the renewable energy. Because the renewable energy not like the traditional power generation. Really traditional power generation is far from the people. It uh, is uh, centered in the power uh, transmission network. And uh, so you need a long distance transmission. And 10% uh, of 10% to 20% of the electricity is lost on the transmission network. But now, by using the uh, renewable energy, it is more close to the customers. So you don't need the long distance transmission, and uh, so you save the losses and improve the efficiency. This is also like is, uh, coincides with uh, Professor Hack's uh, 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 statement on the, uh, on the future energy usage. Okay? And, uh, Okay, now that we discussed uh, uh, the... Can I ask a question? Okay, yes. So that chart is worldwide, includes the developing world. That's not yes, all worldwide. over the world, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. Thanks. okay. and uh, okay, now let's to, uh, talk about some, uh, in give an introduction about uh, the renewable energy sources. And uh, what are the renewable energy sources? The renewable are some, the sources that we can, that can be naturally replenished on a human time scale. And they include the forms of the biofuel, biomass, wind power, the hydropower, and uh, the tidal power, and uh, the wind uh, solar power. 
Okay, in the United States, that, uh, this is the picture, this is the uh, pie chart shows that the, the 2015, uh, the sources for the U.S. Uh, energy supply. You can see that uh, most of the supply is from the uh, fossil fuels. Only 10% of the energy is from the renewable. And uh, um, in the 10% renewable, we have quarter of it from the hydropower. Okay, uh, the hydropower, and uh, this picture shows the development of the U.S. Uh, uh, with respect to the time. And uh, we can see that before the that 1990s, that we have no, uh, we have only one form of the renewable energy that is from the hydropower. Uh, but after the 2005, after the 2000, that the, re the renewable, the hydropower is developing very uh, flattened. But and uh, we have more and uh, more and more increase of the renewable energy from the. Uh, from the other renewable energy sources. In my speak, that, uh, I, I will not uh, talk about too much on the hydropower plant for two reasons. For one reason, you know that some, uh, some, some states or some uh, documents, they don't will the, uh, the hydropower as the renewable energy. For, because first, the, the, renewable, uh, the hydropower plant, when you generate the hydropower plant, the hydro turbine will uh, will release a lot of the machine. And uh, in a study shows that in Brazil, because Brazil has uh, over 70% of their energy from the, from the hydro. And uh, the machine is released by the hydropower plant is more, than, is more than two times of the machine released in the city. Okay, in the whole city area. So, and on the other hand, that the, uh, the, 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 the construction of the uh, hydropower plant will cause the disaster of the uh, local environment. So, in some states, like in California, in their uh, development, uh, the renewable energy development plan, they don't view the, they don't view the re uh, hydropower as the renewable energy. Okay, on the other hand, the second reason is that the uh, hydropower plant usually take lot of time to uh, take a, a lot of in investment and a long period of construction. So uh, in, my, uh, in my speak, I will not talk too much on the hydro and the mainly focus on the uh, wind and the solar. Okay, any question? Yeah, you can dis uh, disrupt me anytime if you have questions. Okay, and uh, okay. Talk about uh, the U.S. have a very clear, okay, a clear plan to develop the renewable energy, and this is this is the renewable energy portfolio standard. This is a, a mandated regulatory plan for the uh, for the U for U.S. states to follow uh, uh, for to develop the renewable energy. M uh, most of the U.S. states joined in this uh, uh, RPS and. Uh, in, uh, this figure is updated in 2013. Let's take some states for example. You can see that in, uh, uh, in Connecticut, it set the target that to have the 20%, 23% of their electricity generation is from the renewable by 2020. Okay, then let's see the New York. New York has the plan of have 30% renewable energy by 2015. And uh, uh, for California, has 33% from the renewable by 2020. Okay, now it's already three years after the, the after the uh, after this plan. Let's see that the development of some of them. Okay, in the California, they reached to 25% by last year. And the last in last year, they proposed a more ambitious plan to have a, a penetration of 50% of renewable energy in 2035. And then it's uh, Hawaii. Hawaii that just reached the, the t uh, reached the 23.2 percent last year, and they propose to in next uh, next uh, uh, 25 years they won't have the renewable energy be 100 percent. It means that all of their electricity generation is from the renewable energy. Okay, that is very amazing. And uh, okay, you can. From this picture, that we can see that most of the states are on the on the right track to develop the renewable energy, and uh, uh, by integrating more and more renewable energy, we will have we will change the composition of the United States uh, energy structure, our energy composition. Okay, 
This one shows the U.S. Uh, electricity generation and uh, the prediction. From the left uh, graph, we see that the development and uh, the prediction of the U.S. Uh, uh, electricity uh, sources, the composition of the electricity sources. Uh, this is the line of 2015. It is based on the measurement and uh, compared with the uh, with the measurement of in 1993. We can see that there are some significant changes. First is from the coal power plant, coal power, coal, uh, coal power generation. In 1993, it was takes more than half of the electricity generation, but now it's reduced to 33 percent, only 30, only one third. And uh, the reduced 20 percent is comp uh, compensated by the uh, natural gas because of the reduce, uh, because of uh, the concern of the environmental pr protection and the reduction of the price of the natural gas. And uh, the renewable energy only increased a little bit from 11% to 13%. So we see that there is still a potential, huge potential from the renewable energy. So it is predicted that in 2040 that uh, the renewable energy will take around one third of the renewable uh, one third of the electricity generation and uh, the coal generation will be keep will be kept reducing and to only take 18 percent of the uh, of the energy supply and the uh, and the uh, uh, natural gas generation will increase to 38 percent and uh, there is another thing you should uh, be uh, you may be interested in is the, gen uh, the the part of the nuclear because of the concern of the uh, security from the nuclear. So it, in the future, we, it will be kept a constant. And you can see nearly no ch will be reduced a little bit, but the, not the increase too much. Not, the, not, not too much. OK. The picture shows the uh, uh, electricity generation, the composition change. And uh, uh, from another side that we can see that the U.S. is on the right track to uh, develop the renewable energy, this figure shows the new installation for the recent years. You can see that from uh, 2014, 2015, 2013, 2014, and 2015, we have the new installed uh, electricity generation is mainly from the wind generation and the natural and uh, the solar generation. We only have a few of the new installa installation uh, for the coal power plant. And uh, in the, uh, the first quarter of the 2016, you can see that even that over 99% uh, uh, of the new installation is the uh, wind generation and the uh, wind generation and the solar generation. Okay. Okay. Uh, by uh, after introducing the uh, globe, uh, the the big picture of the renewable energy. Now let's see the de the development of uh, different kind of the renewable energy. First, let's focus on the wind power. Okay. The wind power that is. Wind power that is that uh, the people use the uh, wind turbine to absorb the energy in the wind resources, and uh, uh, usually people that like group a large amount of the wind turbine to form a, a wind farm. Wind farm. The wind farm can be located uh, on the hilltop, and can be uh, on the plain, or offshore, or that like, uh, close to the I-95 bridge that uh, you can. Once you pass the bridge, you saw this wind turbine. And uh, the wind turbine, like, uh, the plan to develop the wind, wind energy in the U.S. Like, uh, was called 2030. It means that uh, it, uh, the U.S. will have 20% of the electricity generation from the wind power in two uh, by 2030. It means that the, electricity gener uh, the installed capacity of the wind will be Changed will be increased from 11.6 gigawatt in 2006 to 305 gigawatt in 2030. That is almost 30 times of the uh, installed capacity in 2006. And uh, this plan was proposed in 2008. And uh, nowadays, that in 2014, the new uh, the uh, accumulative uh, 
accumulative uh, wind power, uh, wind generation takes five percent of the uh, of the total capacity in the U.S. And uh, from this figure, you can see the. Uh, F from the figure, figure you can see the development of the renewable, uh, the wind power in the U.S. Okay, from uh, uh, the, the in 2008, in 2007, like uh, the Obama government, uh, in 2007 the, the government proposed the, the production tax credit to promote the, uh, the the installation of the wind power. So you can see that uh, 2007, 2008, and 2009 we have a very solid increase of the wind generation and uh, there is a big drop of the wind gener wind installation because of that the uh, the tax the subsidy was seized in 2013 um, the, so okay we have a big drop but you can see that after that year in 2014 the so the wind uh, installation have the has a rebound uh, back to the uh, has a rebound. The good news is that in 2015, in December 2015, the tax was determined to extend until 2020. So that in the following years, we will see a, a, a continuously increase of the renew, uh, of the wind power generation. Okay, uh, here that you can see that this we plan to have the 20. We ha plan to have 20% of penetration from the wind power by 2030. Okay, 20%. It's a big number. Okay, because that the wind generation has the has the inter the wind resources as we know has the intermittent uh, characteristics. It will cause uh, big trouble to the power system. Okay, the issues that fir first is the mismatch of the wind and the people, and. Uh, so you can see that this blue, this blue area uh, represents the areas with abandoned wind resources. Okay, here we have the uh, in the U.S. the uh, the main area have the wind resources is uh, fo is located in the Midwest area, like the state of Iowa, uh, North and South Dakota. Okay, but uh, as we know, in this area, the people density is low, and the the electricity demand is low. So. Once the electricity is generated, we need to deliver the electricity to the people to the places with uh, with with more people with more demand, and uh, we need to deliver the power from the Midwest to the east area or to the south to the western area. Okay, so it requires to build a new transmission network, new uh, infrastructure for the uh, electricity delivery. If that we don't have so much, we if we don't have a new uh, electricity. Uh, Transmission network, uh, transmission new transmission uh, lines. It will cost the waste of. We, we must uh, to uh, curtail the generation of the wind power so that to make sure that the system is stable. Okay, this problem is also uh, existing in China. In China, the wind resources is mainly uh, on the northern area, so that the. But the the, the uh, transmission lines is not enough to transport to tr transmit the power from the northern area to the south southern or eastern area. So, like in China, over fifty percent of the wind generation is wasted, just uh, curtailed. Okay, and mm -hmm. with long distance transmission with modern equipment, it, is it more efficient? You said it was ten or twenty percent loss. Yes, over twenty. Long. Is that over would long. that still be the take case if you put a new system in? Uh, the the to increase the efficiency, that uh, we need to increase the voltage level, and uh, if uh, for our present techniques for transmitting transmi uh, transmission of the power, that the the losses will be like ten percent. If that in the future we can take advantage of over higher. Uh, Ultra, we call it ultra high voltage transmission. Could be 1,000 kilowatt or 1,200 kilowatt. That will increase the efficiency. And uh, another technique to increase the efficiency is called the high voltage, high voltage DC transmission for the direct current transmission. That one is also helps to decrease the uh, decrease the losses. And uh, uh, another challenge of integrating wind power is is, bec is the uh, mismatch of the supply and the demand. What does it mean? You can see that here we have two curves. One curve, okay, this shows the uh, 
the, the, the time scale is for one day from the z uh, 0 a.m. Uh, 0 uh, a.m. to 24 p.m. 24 uh, p.m. and uh, we have two curves here one the blue uh, the the red the the yellow one represents the load profile and that is the uh, demand of the people of the industry the the blue line shows the generation of the wind okay so you can see that usually we have the wind speed is high at the night time but that is the time that the load demand is low okay but when the people consume the more power in the daytime, the wind speed is low, the wind generation is also low. So you mean that if that we have more and more uh, the wind power that at nighttime, the generation from the wind could be larger than the consumption. Okay, we need to figure out some ways to, to, store, to store the extra generation, otherwise we need to waste it. Okay, so this that uh, mean uh, this is the second challenge. Then the third challenge is the intermittent wind speed. As we say that the wind speed is varying, that the weak, it, and it's not. It's very hard to predict the wind speed, and uh, even that some in some seasons the wind speed is different, and even that the uh, consecutive days the wind speed is also different. So it will uh, make challenges for our for us to dispatch the power generated by the wind by the wind turbines. Okay. These are the uh, uh, these are the introduction of the wind or the wind power. Okay. Then next let's look at the uh, the the solar power. Okay. The solar power is another main source of the renewable energy. And the solar power usually have two types, two forms. First, it's called photovoltaic. It takes advantage of the photoelectric uh, conversion, photoelectric uh, effect that convert directly the, the energy in the light to the electricity. But uh, usually, the efficiency is low, and uh, uh, the maximum can only be 22%. Another uh, form, another category of the solar power is called the uh, concentrated solar power. It, uh, it converts the energy in the light to the heat, then to the electricity. Okay, there are three types of the heat, uh, power, uh, heat of the concentrated power, solar power. First uh, is the parabolic uh, troughs. This is a parabolic trough solar uh, farm in, the, in California. It, the, 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 uh, the principle is that we have reflectors to reflect the sunlight to the focal point of the, uh, of the, of the panel, and uh, we will have a pipeline containing some fluid. Then the, uh, the sunlight, reflected sunlight, will heat up the, the fluid and, uh, and force the fluid to, uh, to move, and uh, they, that, at, the, at, the, at the end of the uh, pipeline, there will be a heat generator. There will be a heat engine to get the uh, to generate the electricity. Uh, another, the second type of the uh, uh, the CSP is the parabolic dish concentrator. It also reflects the light to the focal point of the of the reflector, and uh, then you put a dish starting uh, generator. Okay, and uh, the generator will uh, it will the, the the difference of the heat. The difference of the heat uh, we, uh, on the t two tanks of the uh, generator will push and generate electricity. We push the generator and uh, generate electricity. Okay, the third type of the CSP is called a solar tower. This is the uh, uh, largest solar tower in the world uh, in Spain. And uh, you can see that we, th this one has many, many reflectors of the sunlight, that it will reflect the sunlight to the uh, to to the uh, it will reflect the sunlight to the uh, to some to a water tank of the tower that it the heat will boil the tower and then gen uh, and produce the steam the steam will drive the turbine and finally get the electricity okay this uh, this these uh, reflectors are controlled by the computers so that they can change their direction with respect to the position of the sign. Okay, this is the largest uh, one in the world. And uh, the solar power that uh, has the development of solar power in the US 
uh, we can see that uh, ever, since the 2010, we have only 0.3% of electricity is generated from the solar power. But with the subsidies from the government and the incentives, uh, we have a very solid increase of the solar, gen uh, solar power in the U.S. And uh, uh, with every year, you have, we have like 20% of the increase. In, and in 2015, that, uh, uh, we have the cumulative uh, generation, uh, cumulative capacity of the solar power uh, uh, is 20 is around 20 gigawatt. And it is predicted that in 2021, the generation, the capacity of the, power, uh, of the solar power will take 6.1 of the installed capacity all over the US. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, with the large, large uh, penetration of the solar, of the solar uh, generation, that uh, it also because we know the solar, the sunlight, the radiation of the sunlight is also varying and intermittent. It also uh, will cause the problem for the power system. Okay, this is the intermittent and the varying output of the solar power. That for uh, four typical days that I measured when I was in uh, Detroit, Michigan, and uh, you can see that. For different days that you may have a for a cloudy days you may have the yield of the solar of the solar uh, system is very low and the very uh, sometimes you may have it very fluctuating too much and someday you may have a very good a constant uh, a very good beautiful curve but in some day you may have half day you have it uh, very fluctuating a half day it is very good and the uh, intermittent characteristic of the solar uh, generation will also cause the problem to the power system and uh, 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 okay another uh, challenge from the solar generation is that it will totally change the uh, change the power flow in the distribution network okay we, as we as we discussed that previously the distribution network that is closely connected with the customers uh, usually ha only have one source that is the power from the substation. And all the and it has the radio direction. All the customers are connected on the di distribution network, but uh, no other sources. So you can see that the power flow is also the current flow on the distribution network has only one direction from the source to the customers. Okay, like this. We have center, we have the uh, generators that all generate the electricity and send it to the center of the load. But with the integration of the renewable energy, that it will change. It will change the power flow, the, the direction of the power flow, because that the, the industry, the customers, they can't have the distributed uh, solar, solar generation or wind generation on their on, their on site. And uh, so the consumers will be changed from the consumer to prosumers. It means that they not consume the electricity. They can also provide the electricity to the to the system. Then it will it will be a great challenge to the distribution network because the the protection, the all the other devices that are used in the distribution network are designed for only one single direction. But now you have the bi direction power flow. It will be a different story. Okay. Another uh, two issues that. Uh, induced by the solar generation will, will be the voltage issues and the dispatch issues. And we'll discuss these two issues uh, a little later. Okay. So that, uh, this, these are the introduction of the wind generation and the solar generation in the United States. Okay. And uh, to further promote the uh, large penetration of the uh, solar and the wind generation, we know that the first important, the first important uh, the first, the, the, the number one uh, factor is the cost, right? And uh, when I was, when I started my study uh, in the Michigan in 2000, 2009, at that time, the wind power and the, the, uh, the, the electricity generated by the wind power and the solar power are around five to six times of the electricity generated by traditional ways. So you can see that it's totally not competitive. And if that they are 
the, if they keep this uh, cost, I think that maybe they have, will have very limited market and uh, but now let's say that after that n after se uh, after eight years development, what is the cost of the wind and the solar? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot this. That uh, mm, I'm sorry, and this is for the is also another interesting topic for the PV integration. That uh, uh, this is how to design the rate for the PV owner. That uh, we uh, previously that we have net metering strategy to. Uh, to uh, subsidy the PV, the PV owners. That is means that the the fee ch uh, paid by I mean the electricity bill paid by the PV owners is calculated by the energy they consumed minus energy they generated by their PV panels. So it means that if you have the PV panels that you don't need to. Uh, if you have the PV panel that is very large, you don't need to pay anything of the electricity bill. You even can get paid by it from the uh, from the utility. Okay, but this this strategy was very effective to stimulate to promote the people uh, resident to install the PV panel on their rooftop. But this strategy has been uh, criticized for some people because they think it is the cost of shifting. Okay, why? They think that the, the, PV, uh, the PV owners, that sometimes they think they are rich people, and uh, the people don't have the PV panels are some kind of like, uh, poor people. And the, the, the rich people don't need to pay anything about the updating of the facilities in the distribution, in the distribution network, but the, and the shift, the cost to updating the uh, distribution network are all shifted to the, to the people that uh, they don't have the PV uh, panels. So they think that it is unfair to the poor people and uh, want to change the rate and redesign the rate to uh, for the for the to charge the PV owners, so they have two uh, two strategies. The first is to uh, depend on the time of the use. That is that when uh, the uh, this that will be charged, the PV owner will be charged depend on their usage and uh, depend on the time of their usage. And another is uh, depend on the uh, another strategy is depend on the uh, usage that whether the usage of the uh, the usage of the uh, of the PV owners is on the peak time of the power or not? Okay, these are two different uh, rates. Uh, for uh, rates may take uh, in effect in the future. Okay, this is uh, the uh, is a very interesting thing about the uh, about the uh, uh, about the installing the PV panels. That uh, maybe in the future you want to install the PV panel on your rooftop. You need to talk. About Details of with the with the uh, tech, uh, with the company that like, uh, how you will be charged when you uh, consume the electricity. Okay. Okay. As we discussed, that the uh, number one uh, factor that influenced the uh, increase of. Uh, the installation of the solar and the wind is the cost. Now let's say that what is the cost uh, evolution, uh, revolution, uh, evolution, and, and this is for the wind power. Okay, we can see that uh, from 1980 that uh, the wind power, the price for the cost for the wind power has been reduced, has been dropped by 92%. That is a very huge number. So that right now the the wind price, the gener the wind electricity generated by wind is within the range of five cent five cent per kilo kilowatt hour to ten cent per kilowatt hour. That is a very competitive price in some of the state, and uh, it uh, is also a price that the wind can take place the hydropower as the main source for the for the renewable energy. Okay, then is the uh, the analysis of the uh, PV cost. You can see that for the uh, we have uh, the two types of PV cost. One is utility scale, that is a large scale that is usually uh, that uh, invested by the uh, investors or utilities. Another is distributed solar PV, that is usually owned by the residents or some industry on the rooftop of the uh, of the houses or the uh, 
of the uh, industry plant. And uh, uh, the utility scale solar power is, in, is dropped, uh, has been dropped uh, 62 percent. And uh, the distributed solar PV has uh, the cost, the installation cost has dropped 50 uh, percent. That uh, that's, uh, is a huge drop that is, uh, uh, of the renewable energy that so that we can <coughs> so we can see that uh, as the uh, cultivation of the government subsidies or government support that the, the market of the renewable energy is becoming more and more mature. And uh, so it is uh, expected that in the future we will have more and more renewable energy in, uh, in integration. And uh, if we view that eight years ago that the renewable energy as an infant, as an infant in the market, it, uh, it needed the care from the government. But now we can see that it is already a teenager. It has its own advantages. It has a competitive price. So uh, we, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, expecting that they can that compete in the future market. Okay, and. Uh, <coughs> Another, uh, okay, the next thing is talk about the challenges of integrating the renewable energy in the power system. And uh, uh, this is like a changes to the power system. Like uh, uh, if we say that who wants the changes, that uh, uh, all of us uh, raise a hand, but if we want to say that who wants to change, that uh, maybe a few people want to change, but uh, and uh, if we say who wants to lead the change, maybe nobody wants to lead the change because it is too challenging to do so. And uh, but the power system must uh, to lead the change of transforming the industry from the uh, traditional way to the renewable way. And uh, uh, so to get more and more renewable energies, the first step is to solve the challenges in the in the power. Uh, once we have the renewable energy in the power system. Okay, before we talk about uh, the power system, the challenges by integrating more and more renewable energy, there, are, there is one concept I need to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, be, uh, to cl clarify. It's called the power system generation dispatch. Okay, for the operation of the power system, we have two very, very root, very, very important uh, principles. The number one is uh, reliability. Okay, means that all, at all of the times, the demand and the supply must be kept constant, kept balanced, so that we will have no uh, uh, stability issues. Another, the second reason is that the second uh, principle is economic. E economy. So once we maintain the reliability of the system, we want to uh, we want to make the system become more and more economic. Okay. This is the load. Uh, this is the daily load profile, as we discussed uh, previously. You can see that it shows uh, from 0 a.m. to 24 uh, p.m. and uh, uh, the load uh, vari variation, that uh, coincidence matches the people's behaviors. It okay uh, uh, as people get up, that uh, the inc the load is increased until that uh, to the 8 or 9 a.m. in the morning, reach to the num the first peak. Then, like, uh, uh, then the most of the people goes into the uh, um, uh, goes to work, and then uh, after the work, people get home, and uh, uh, the system reach to the number two, uh, the second peak that is around uh, eight p.m. And uh, so, to this is the load profile. So to keep the system reliable, we need the generation also matches the load, and. Uh, uh, <coughs> But because that we have different can different uh, generation, uh, different power plant for some of them, such as uh, uh, such as the nuclear power plant, is not easy to control. It's uh, uh, so usually we set it to satisfy the base load. For some of the uh, therm uh, the uh, the gener uh, the the power plant, the coal power plant, the coal power plant usually it's takes hours, four hours, up to four hours to start up or, or, or shut down. And uh, it also cost, uh, uh, the, the, the cost is also very high to, uh, sh uh, sh uh, to turn on or off of the, of the, uh, of the coal power plant. So uh, we need to <coughs> dispatch the different types of the generation and to satisfy uh, the 
to meet the uh, variation of the of the load profile and uh, <coughs> you can see that because the fluctuation of the uh, power power gener of the load profile so we need some hot backup really it's very expensive to operate uh, to meet the the the, uh, the variation of the peak okay uh, this is the power system generation display. Now, with this background, you can easily understand the next uh, the, the problem. It's uh, here we have that uh, uh, you may be confusing about this dark, this uh, lovely dark. Okay, what is why it is re relevant to power system? Okay, if you think that if you view this, you, you imagine that the dark represents the load profile, you will don't think it is adorable. Okay, so this is that once we have more and more renewable energies at the curve, the load profile, the load profile will become. Okay, you can see that with more and more renewable energy, especially the uh, PV uh, generation, this is uh, what will happen in the California. And uh, because that usually this happens in the spring or fall, that is the time we have abandoned so, uh, sunshine resources, but the load, the air conditioner load is not too much. And uh, when the sunshine is very high in the noon time, and uh, it will drag, okay, drag the curve, load curve, and uh, will make the belly of the dark larger and larger. Okay, even that it will reach to the mi uh, minimum, uh, minimum line and will be less than the load consumption. Okay, at that time, we have no choice. Uh, we either to store the extra, to store the extra energy from the PV, or we just uh, waste it. Okay. Then is another thing is that you can see that because that we have the uh, solar gener so solar generation at the daytime, but at the nighttime, at it also the peak load time at around eight eight p.m. Uh, the load is very high, but we don't have the solar. We don't have the solar generation, so it means that the power will have a very long and a steep ramp to increase the, to, for the load for the load uh, curve to increase. And uh, in this study, that it could be thirteen thousand megawatt in just four in just three hours. You know that three hours is even not enough for the coal power plant to start. Okay, so it will cause a big challenge for the for the operation of the power system you must uh, have a very accurate prediction of the solar uh, variation or you need to take advantage to, you need to take advantage of the energy storage to help smooth the uh, smooth the belly of the curve of the dark okay this is uh, one challenge that is also a very uh, important in the transmission network in the large power system Okay. Another challenge is from the uh, is in the distribution network. First, let's introduce this concept of power quality. Power quality, to simplify, it is just uh, that what is the quality that uh, the power utility sends you. Okay, it contains two side, two uh, aspect. One is voltage, another is uh, frequency. So that uh, if the power quality is poor, it will cause that uh, the uh, your your light is fluctuating and may you have the loss of the data and not a uh, proper operation of your computer and uh, in the power quality issues usually that we are uh, uh, the over voltage and the low voltage are two most important most significant issues in the power quality so now let's start, let's see that what are the uh, over voltage and the low voltage issues okay for the for the Distribution network, as we discussed, is usually a radio structure that the power is flowing from the transformer substation to the customer with one direction. Okay, and uh, just like the uh, the turning the running water that we have the running water flowing from the high water water pressure to the low water pressure, and uh, if we have more uh, usage along the pipeline, it will reduce the the water. 
the, the, the uh, speed of the water flow and uh, may have a very limited uh, water light in the rear end. Just uh, like, like, uh, like the water, like the uh, running water, the voltage is the same. Okay, in usually in the distribution network, okay, we have the voltage, the current is flowing from the high voltage to the low voltage. And uh, along with the transmission line, that uh, we have the voltage drops. And uh, if that we have the distribution line is over long, that at the remote end, the, the voltage may be dropped out of the security range because that we have a range of the operation operating voltage. It must, uh, the voltage must satisfy or uh, within this range. Otherwise, it will cause security issues. And uh, to if there is uh, voltage issues, we need to use some devices such as the step uh, voltage regulator to uh, boost up the voltage so that the, over, the overall voltage can be within the security range. And uh, so what would happen if we have many, many uh, rooftop PV panels? Okay, uh, the, the rooftop PV panel that will generate the electricity, if we have too many, okay, in, uh, in the California, the, the rooftop PV panel already is 20% penetration, and in the Germany, the rooftop PV panels is more than 50%. And uh, the electricity generated, the, generated by the rooftop top PV panel will be consumed locally firstly, but there, if there are some extra uh, generation, it will go back to the power grid. And if the over generation, if the extra generation is too large, that it will boost up the voltage at the remote end, will, be, will cause the over voltage issues. Okay, the over voltage issues is also, it, is also should be avoided eh? avoided in the distribution network. So based on the okay, based on the uh, industry standard, once the overall happens, the PV that the, the PV panel close to the over voltage that cause the over voltage must be shut down, and so it will cause that always that the in certain area, like the PV panels are shut down. It will cause the unfairness of the PV users and uh, will uh, discourage their participation of in installing the uh, renewable energy. Okay, this is the uh, over voltage and under voltage issue in the distribution network caused by the uh, PV panels. So, Okay, you can see that we have the uh, issues in the transmission and transmission side in the issue and the issues in the distribution side to solve the issues to solve the over voltage and under voltage issues, and uh, the straightforward way is to take advantage of the energy storage and uh, to absorb the the extra power that we the power uh, absorb the energy uh, extra power and release the power we like uh, in some time that uh, we need it. And uh, the energy storage uh, technology is, a ver is also a very hot topic. It includes the battery, uh, fuel cell, flywheel, and the super uh, conducting magnetic energy storage and the, the hydro pumping storage. Okay, and uh, a company with uh, a company with uh, uh, increase of the renewable energy, the electric uh, the energy storage market is also booming. I can see that in 2015, that we have the new installed energy storage that in the U.S. is double of the submission, the installation in 2013 and 2014. And uh, it is expected that in the future that the uh, renewable energy will have a steady uh, increase and uh, until in 2021, it will be around uh, 20, around 10 times of the accumulative installation in 2015. And uh, the installation the, of the, uh, the energy storage systems also bring uh, the metrics uh, the merits not only for the renewable energy, but also for the all kinds of all different part of the uh, power system. Uh, it can help the transmission part by delaying the delaying the upgrade of the transmission facility. It also can help to regulate the frequency, the voltage in the uh, transmission network, and in the distribution side, it can help regulate the power quality. 
This one is a, a, a department, all, department energy supported uh, project called the Community Energy Storage Project. That is to install the community uh, energy storage close to the residence, residence to adjust the uh, uh, power quality. Um, okay. Then the uh, energy storage can also be integrated or joined used with the renewable energy. This one that I think maybe you are familiar is the power wall from the Tesla, from Tesla company. And uh, it, the Tesla that plans to integrate the, uh, the power wall, it is a composition of the, renew of the battery, uh, com combine this power wall with the, with the uh, rooftop solar panels and the, the electric vehicles to form a, to form a uh, uh, residential power grid so that maybe in the future you can just uh, use the grid generated by your own devices you will not rely on the power grid okay this is the uh, energy storage and uh, okay energy storage is that it's very good but uh, why we cannot uh, to use it in uh, many many applications the most imp most uh, uh, hurdle is from the cost Okay, here we have two pictures that shows the cost of the energy storage compared with the existing ways to solve different problems. These are the problem from the transmission, from the distribution, and uh, from the uh, renewable energy applications. And this uh, gray bar shows the, the cost of existing method. And this uh, blue bar shows the uh, the price range by using uh, energy storage. You can see that most of the uh, energy energy storage solutions have the cost is much higher than the existing solutions. So, if we want to uh, use the energy storage in in uh, many uh, in the applications in the power system, the first thing is to reduce the energy storage price to below. Uh, Two hundred dollars for per kilowatt hours, and uh, this is uh, <coughs> this is the prediction of the uh, energy storage price for div by different uh, agent uh, uh, associate associates, and uh, they all predict that in two thousand uh, in two thousand thirty by two thousand thirty that the ener uh, the s price for the lithium iron battery can be while below can be can be around two hundred dollars per kilowatt hour then. We will see that the market will be uh, the energy storage market will be uh, have a big step. Okay, uh, this is uh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry that for the uh, over long uh, introduction ab about the renewable energy and uh, in the la in this part it's about the, uh, to consider the solution and the trends of the renewable energy in the context of the smart grid. I will go through this part a little first. And uh, so what is smart grid? Smart grid is that uh, we want to solve the problem of the renewable energy integrating and the other pro problem in the power system by a systematic viewpoint. Okay, we see that we can solve the problem by using energy storage, but the energy storage is expensive and uh, it is also like kind of based on the pieces. And so to solve the problem and also update the power system into a into a uh, into a more uh, into a modern uh, power grid, we we need to build the tra transform the system power system into the smart grid. And uh, uh, to simplify, the sim smart grid is the present is the existing power system plus the information technology. Okay, usually that in the power systems that we don't have too much information about the system. It's not very good of the uh, visibility, but uh, with the with the information technology, especially the b two direction, the bi directional in, uh, information technology, we can view the status of the uh, system. We can view the system of the system. Then we can apply uh, the once the control techniques. We can integrate with the power system with the market uh, to increase the efficiency, and uh, we also can. Uh, increase the uh, security of the power system okay 
And uh, the uh, smart grid, the solution of the smart grid can be from the generation side by using advanced prediction, uh, advanced control. And from the load side, we can use the demand side management and the load forecasting. And based on the big data, we can do very, very accurate prediction of, of the customer behaviors. Then on the network side, we can form the small network called the micro grid. Okay. Then this is advanced uh, control for the renewable energy sources. The renewable energy sources is composed by the generation panels and the Usually we know its output is DC. Then we need the power electronic converters to convert it from DC to AC. And uh, then we have the inverter. The inverter provides a way to control the power flow in the power system. And uh, we can take advantage of the, uh, uh, to control the inverter to adjust the reactor power, the real power flow in the, in the power system. And uh, the next topic, uh, very interesting or hot topic is for is the demand response. Demand response, that, uh, to simplify, is that we control the demand of the customers so that it will uh, increase the efficiency and uh, uh, so that and the load profile can well match the profile of the renewable energy. Okay, there are two general approaches to uh, for the demand response. One is called a direct load control. Another is called indirect load. Okay, direct load maybe it be it uh, could be that there is a direct controller just in their home. Then the utility can directly control your, your usage of your energy consumption. Then to adjust the uh, energy consumption of the whole area, uh, the indirect load uh, load control method can be uh, realized by using the price signal. If that the utility send you uh, information about the price, say that like next uh, uh, tomorrow at the uh, at the two at the eight p.m. that the electricity price will be very high. So then you can determine, you can decide by yourself whether you will take on, well, you will turn on some appliances such as the washers or dryers. That is the indirect way. Okay, and. Uh, 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 this is an example. This is a very interesting company called O Power, and uh, this company was just uh, bought by the Oracle in May. This company that uh, uh, is uh, uh, target is a startup company tar targeted to do the demand response. Okay, his, uh, its width is very interesting. It doesn't tell you that okay for next month you will save like twenty or thirty bucks if you uh, follow the demand response uh, suggestions because people usually don't care about 20 or 30 bucks and uh, feel, think that if we follow the instruction is very complex. Okay, hey, what, what this company did is that he get the information from the utility and uh, send, you that, send you the information on your electricity bill that in the December, in, uh, take, uh, for example, in the uh, November, that your electricity saving is number, is ranking number seven in the local area. Okay, so it takes the advantage of the people's psychology that want to compete with the other people. So next month, you will try hard to uh, save the energy that so then you can rank higher in the list. Okay, it's a very interesting company about the uh, demand response. Then another topic is that another thing that we, another technique can be used in the power system is the big data. Okay, uh, for big data, I think that my understanding of the big data is not just big, it is comprehensive. It, can, it will cover the most aspects of your, uh, of your life, then we, can, we call it as big data. For example, that if, we want use the, if we want to use the demand response to adjust the, your load, and uh, okay, you, you are okay to adjust the load, but the, the utility company don't know when you are at home, when you are not ho at home. But uh, if the utility company and uh, get the data that tomorrow that uh, you will be on the trip, you will out of town. Okay, then it uh, it is okay, and uh, they can adjust uh, your load to uh, follow the demand response instructions. Okay, and uh, 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 the okay the 
the, 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 the last topic that I want to introduce is about the microgrid in the smart grid. And uh, I think some of you may still um, remember the, uh, the, the sandy storm in 2012. That one caused a lot of uh, uh, economic losses. And I know that in uh, some area in New York, they, even out, they, are, they were even out of the power for around one week. That's uh, terrible. And, uh, but uh, there are nearly no way to, to uh, deal with such extreme, extreme disasters because if we want to update the, uh, the infrastructure of the power system, it will be cost, the cost will be very, very huge. And uh, <coughs> so uh, it's recommended by the Department of Energy to build the microgrid. What is the microgrid? That is that we have the load group of load, group of the energy generation, the renewable energy sources, and uh, within the area that we build the microgrid, and uh, the microgrid is totally controllable. Then once we have, once we have the uh, e extreme event, the, okay, uh, we can isolate this microgrid from the power grid and uh, because it has its own generation. So it will increase the resiliency of the uh, distribution network and uh, the power system. Okay, okay this one uh, will uh, skip and uh, talk about uh, the future trends of the renewable energy. And we can say that in the future, it will be market driven. And uh, the one of the most advantage, most uh, important ad advantages of the renewable energy is that once the renewable energy, such as the wind or, or power or, or solar, is is installed, the price for the uh, for the wind or solar to compete in the market will be very very competitive because that we know the wind, the wind resources and the solar uh, the sunshine resources are free. So in some in some moment that uh, the the renewable energy can participate or compete in the power in the market with zero price or even negative price so that they increase their competi competitiveness another is the resi resiliency enhancement that uh, as we discussed by taking advantage of the renewable energy and the microgrid to uh, make to enhance the security of the energy supply and is another uh, is uh, ancillary services to provide for the transmission network to the big power system. Okay, and uh, okay, this is uh, uh, a topic that uh, I want to introduce. I'm sorry to like for last uh, so long time. And uh, if you have any questions, that let me. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. about like the seasons, so how would you modify that? The so there's different, like during the seasons, like in the winter time we have less sun, and in mm -hmm. the summer time there's more sun, so how would you modify that throughout the year? Uh, usually, like, if we want to start the behavior, oh, you mean the, the okay, how to, how to, how to uh, use the solar for different seasons, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that is the big issue that you have a good question. Because that is in the soul, uh, in the winter area, especially in the northeastern area or northern area, the wind, the solar yield is very limited. So, at that time, that you need you you can use the energy storage, or you can just uh, get the power from the power grid because you have no choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Could could a big factory like Sikorsky you're familiar with their big... Oh, you mean Sikorsky? Sikorsky. Okay. Could they draw, meet their operating needs with solar and wind w on a sunny day? Or it, do they have to use primarily other sources? Mm, that depends on the, the, the land they can use. You know, like uh, if they want to build a large uh, power plant, the, the solar plant, they need a, a large area of the... Of the of the land, usually that people install the power, uh, the solar pl solar panel on the rooftop, but uh, we all we know that the rooftop is also usually used for many other things, and uh, so the rooftop is limited. You can install the uh, the 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 uh, solar panel uh, parking lot. That's okay, and. Uh, <coughs> 
Uh, I think that if assist with the other generations, maybe some uh, the diesel generators that they are capable of providing the renewable uh, the, the power that about their consumption. And uh, as we know, as uh, as we know that uh, the, the the Google and uh, the uh, Facebook, they are building the very large, uh, very large power, uh, solar plant in the Nevada or in somewhere of the uh, California to support their data center. Yeah. So this is a promising way for the industry to save on their electricity bills. Yes. Yes. Across universities across the country. Yes. What effect would it have on the percentage of like solar energy like across the country? Uh, you mean the the cost? Yeah. Or like how much would it generate? Like if you know they're like like universities across the country, if they if PV paneling on rooftops was installed on buildings that you know have been around for a while and stuff, and since there'd be so many of them, like mm. you know, if something like that were to become like something that they'd want to create happen. I say, yeah, it's a good uh, question that uh, we, uh, I think the cost of installation, the, uh, installing the solar on the uh, on campus can uh, follow the cost of this curve because it is the residential uh, uh, site, it's the distributed PV panels. And uh, uh, we also are carrying out, okay, cost. Okay, that uh, will follow this distribute the cost of the distributed solar PV, and uh, we are also carrying out the research to find the, the feasibility of transforming the campus into a microgrid with only the PV and uh, maybe diesel generators, and uh, uh, <coughs> a study shows that uh, uh, if we want to confirm that all the campus. Uh, consumed by uh, supplied by the P by the PV power, that it will uh, need around the 1.6. Uh, 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 no, I'm sorry, 8, me 8 megawatt, right? It's around megawatt uh, uh, solar uh, solar installations, and uh, I don't think that the rooftop of all all the buildings is enough. We need some extra space for such as the uh, parking lot. To build the uh, the PV panels. Yeah. So it's good to do like PV paneling more like on west coast areas and like big areas of land, so then it'll get. Uh, on west area, that, yeah, they have a lot of land to do that, and in Nevada, they have the desert to do that, that desert to do that, and uh, another advantage for the western area is they have abundant uh, solar uh, irradiation, radiation about the um, uh, in in California and uh, Arizona some. Area like this. Yeah. So, in 20 years, what will Connecticut's energy pep, uh, sources look like? Will will we be importing renewable energy from uh, from uh, wind farms in other states, or will we be still pretty much uh, largely using natural gas and Canadian hydropower? I see. I see. Yeah, the connected card from the map that uh, I show about the wind sources, wind uh, wind sources, and also that the map of the solar sources that are connected is not a very good location to develop the renewable energy, mainly on the solar and the wind. That uh, mm, I don't think that the connected card can have more uh, renewable energy that more than maybe. 20 or 30 percent that uh, maybe we need to import the renewable energy from the other state. Even to get to 20 percent, we have to import? Oh. Uh, 20 percent should be okay, I think. But uh, in the winter time, maybe not enough. Yeah. Okay. That's my opinion. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you.